Now, this story is not going to be what you think. Now, if you want to skip the whole entire video, the conclusion of this video is that leverage ETFs, 2X, 3X, Ultra, any of ETFs that are leveraged to that extent, are all mathematically flawed. And unless it is for a short-term hold, I would avoid them altogether. So in the 2007 and 2008 time period, Molly Fool was an extremely popular website. And Molly Fools created a stock rating program, which is essentially kind of like a game where people can compete and see who could come out on top of everybody else. And the way Molly Fools kind of described this game or program was that if you rated seven or more stocks, you would receive a rating along with nearly 28,000 other players. And the way it worked is you would make a call for each pick, whether the stock was expected to outperform or underperform. A time frame, whether it's a one year, two year, up to a five year target. And then every single player would essentially get a rating. So if you beat the markets for your pick by 1%, you would get one point. But on top of that, there was also another rating for what percentage of your picks were actually correct. So between the period of 2008 and 2013, I was playing this game. And for a good period of time, I became the number one trader out of more than 70,000 participants in this game. And I would actually do this by logging into my account maybe once every like two, three months. So I wasn't even very active, but I was number one. But not only that, I was significantly ahead of the number two person in the 70,000 plus person game. And how I was able to do that is I figured out that all leverage ETFs, whether they were bullish or bearish on a position, industry, index, were all mathematically flawed. All of these ETFs over time would essentially decay closer to zero without ever actually touching zero. And without going into too many details, essentially, for example, when a stock drops 50%, it needs to go up 100%, right? To just get back to where it started. Now think about an ETF or leverage ETF that was resetting this concept every single day, but also at a 2X or 3X. So I essentially went and Googled a whole list of all the ETFs in the universe that were leveraged, 2X, 3X, ultras, pro shares, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I automatically went to caps and did an underperform rating on every single ETF. So let me show you kind of what that looks like. So on this screen, you can see in these time periods, October, July, June, I basically did a negative or underperformed call with a five-year time frame on every single one of these leverage ETFs. Over here, you can see what the stocks ended up doing compared to the index. And each time I beat the index, I got a point. So just scrolling down this list of 50 names, you can see I was pretty much green on every single one of these. Sure, there were two here where I lost by 88% because the index went up 36%, 136% when the market was only up 48%. And this one, I'm basically break even. We can go to another page and see same thing happened. Sure, I had one where the ETF went up 380%, so I was trailing the markets. But for the most part, you can see that every other one for the most part, I was gathering massive points. So not only was I gathering massive points, the percentage of stocks I was calling right were over 95%. So can you imagine if a person like me were getting more than 95% of my picks correctly and I was generating basically 50%, 100% on all these picks, how far of a lead I would have on anybody out there that was actually picking real stocks. And yes, every once in a while, I would run into an ETF, a sector, which would just go up continuously for a time period where it never went down. And a perfect example of that was like the TQQQ. So in this one, for example, just looking at a long-term chart, it was about 50 cents back in 2010. And now it's $77 because the NASDAQ has essentially non gone down in over 10 years. But the great part about this caps game was that essentially the max time period was five years. So yeah, there were a few indexes or leverage ETF that I might've got killed on, but for the majority, I was killing it and in high percentage. 
And what got more fun is that sometimes I would just close these ETFs out, get my score, and then resubmit them again so I get credit for my percentage. So you can see, I would go in, you know, like April time period, look for new leverage ETFs, come back another few months, look for more leverage ETFs, and to continuously add these to my score or to my gain. There was no way anyone would ever catch up to me based on my percentages and my returns. So in the 2014 time period, I pretty much gave up. I was so far ahead, it was not even fun anymore. But I later found out that in 2017, they essentially changed the rules. They basically removed all ETFs from caps. And one of the things they said was that it's largely only the heavily leveraged ETFs that are being exploited for points. So yeah, so yeah, that was me. I was exploiting these leveraged ETFs for points because I knew all leverage ETFs are essentially mathematically broken. So sadly, when I go back and look at my score, they essentially took away my player rating, my rank, my scores, my accuracy, all because they figured out what I was doing. And a possibility is they might have came back and looked at who was number one for all these years and saw that it was an idle account that was significantly higher than anybody else. So that's my story of how I used leverage ETFs to get myself to become one of the number one paper traders in the world. Hope you guys learned something new. Avoid leverage ETFs unless you're holding or planning to hold only short term. Long term, most of them will damage your portfolio. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.